Hey there YouTube, so this here is my slightly taken apart DRZ400 made by Suzuki. Good find. I uh, got it used off of Craigslist and the previous owner seemed to do good maintenance on it, but the owner before them, because uh, the previous owner didn't own it very long, so I think it was the owner before them, left a lot of these uh, Phillips head screws in place that are metric six by one and the problem is i think they left this thing in a tarp or under a tarp out in the rain here in the pacific northwest so all these bolts rusted in place and i had to end up drilling most of these out which was great and fine it's not that big of a deal especially with this soft steel and aluminum that i'm dealing with and here on the taillight assembly you can see It'll go in with a little bit of effort. I'll put some WD-40 and maybe force it, and that one will be good. But here, stand up, make sure you can see. I really messed up the the hole, so this will not fit in there ever again unless I do something about it. Now, one option that I thought of was to just fill this in with JB Weld, approximate the hole location, drill a new hole, and tap for metric six by one but a buddy of mine who is way better than me with machines recommended I get Gila coils so if you'll allow me to draw for a second here if you've got a threaded hole you know you've got threads on the walls and your fastener comes in with mating threads uh, definitely not drawn to scale or even very neatly and you mess up those threads well you could retap them but the hole I think is a bit past that point so this Gila coil is actually let's uh, take this I'll call that bolt A we'll take bolt A down here and very poorly draw it for you again well the Gila coil provides a nice new set of threads for the bolt to mate with but as I'll show you right here that Gila coil has some thickness to it so the overall outer diameter of that Gila coil is bigger than the original outer diameter of the hole so if I draw that here the end result is gonna be this crosshatch area is the bike material and here are your threads with this vertical Hashiness, that's your Gila coil and bolt A from earlier just threads right in. So what I need to do is drill and tap. I got a kit. I've pre-drilled the hole to approximately how big it needs to be and because I mean shh, don't tell anyone lest they uh, revoke my mechanic, uh, my YouTube mechanic card. I, I do follow the directions. First direction is to just drill and tap using the provided drill. So I've got, or sorry, the provided bit. I've got my DeWalt cordless drill. And this is just for a tail light assembly on a dual sport. This isn't a structural element that's gonna keep me safe. This will, at most, if I botch this, this light's gonna fall off and I'm gonna get a ticket. So I'm not too worried about this. All right, so you, let's see. I think you can see right here, if you look really closely, there's actually two holes because when I drilled out the original bolt, the bit went sideways and the leftmost partial hole is the erroneous hole. And what I'm trying to do is get this sucker into the right portion of the hole, or right portion of the double hole where the bolt actually should be. So I'm gonna spray a little lubrication in there. And 
and start drilling. Oh, and earlier I was talking, you know, this is just a tail light assembly. And I still have my JB Weld option from earlier, so I'm not going to get too anal retentive and worry excessively about how straight and accurate this hole is. I'll do my best. But not going to sweat it too much if I mess it up. All right, here we go. Woo! I'm trying to be nice and gentle so that it doesn't jump over into that other hole. I felt the bit slip a little bit, so I'm going to really crank down on it. And let's try this again. Okay, that was all the material that it needed to break through. So we've drilled. And now to get on to tapping. So this here is a straight flute tap. These uh, ridges on the side are what literally cut the uh, threads into the metal. And the flutes are the non-threaded parts that allow the cutoff metal, I'm assuming, to congregate inside the part without threads so that it uh, doesn't get in the way of cutting. And if you're fancy, you can buy a spiral fluted tap where you're drilling, you're tapping, and because the fluted part has a spiral to it, it chucks all the bits and pieces of metal crap out, and you can tap for longer without having to extract the tap and then put it back in. Okay, they gave me everything I need except for something to drive this tap with. I've been around enough machinery to know that I don't want to do this part, especially on a personal vehicle, by hand. So I'm gonna look for a suitable tool and be right back. Okay, so here is the fly in the ointment. This is a square drive right here, typically intended for a special handle just for taps that would allow me to crank on the tap to push it through in its cutting motion, preparing that hole for the helicoil. Well, I don't have anything even remotely like that, except for a wrench that would allow me to pull from one side, but that's going to torque this thing to the side and make it want to come off center. So what I've opted to do is see if I can't get this cut at least started with a drill. And some dexterity. Just be very careful with my finger to where this goes slow and hopefully I don't break it. Disclaimer, I may or may not have said later, I have literally never done this before outside of work where I have much better equipment like a mag drill and an actual tap handle. So let's, uh, let's see what kind of trouble I can get into. Going to go very slow. I'm kind of feeling what this thing wants to do as it cuts. I'm not even sure if it's cutting yet. And I'm just letting the weight of the drill and a little bit of my hand follow through. All right, I think it's cutting. I get another angle. It's already all the way through. That's good. So I'm gonna pass it all the way through a little faster now. Back out the other way. I have no idea if this is necessary. It's just something I've always done. So I've got those threads chased pretty nicely. I'd say about as nicely as you could expect with a messed up double hole that I started with. Mm make fun of me if you want, but I'm going to read the directions next that says to loosen the grub, what is a grub screw, and slide the collar along the insert tool shaft so that the tang on the insert is positioned halfway up the insert. Okay, 
I've, I've literally done this before and I don't know what those words mean. Uh, all right, there is something I can see to common sense reason this out. Okay. I think this little bit at the end here is meant to be like a screwdriver. And this is saying, loosen the grub screw and slide the collar halfway up, insert tool slot. Oh Lord, I do not know what that, okay. Makes for a nice pointer. This thing here, you can see a, like I'm almost plunger. I think that's what this is, that plunger there. It's got a little itty bitty hex key right there that I believe will loosen this up and move it along. So, let's grab some hexes. Appropriate, seeing as Halloween's on the way. Yeah, if this channel on YouTube goes anywhere, you're gonna have to really get used to terrible dad jokes like that. Why? I don't know why. It's just the way my brain works. Okay. So, I want this thing. If you can see, there's a slot in the end that looks like it mates with that there. And I am going to just guess. Okay. Going back to the directions. Loosen the grub screw and slide the collar along the insert tool shaft. Okay. So that the tang on the insert is positioned halfway. Oh, okay. I think this is the insert. That little piece on the end is the tang. And... That is the slot that is being mentioned. So I'm going to put you about here, per the instructions. And tighten you in place. All right, directions followed. Note, do not position Tang at the very top or bottom of the tool slot. I am in the middle, so I'm all good. Uh, use the installation tool to wind the insert into the threaded hole using light downward pressure until half a turn below the surface. Uh, step four. Uh, half a turn below the surface. Oh, okay. They're saying, whoops, I dropped it. They're saying the very top of this needs to be about a half. Need, the top of this insert needs to be recessed below the top level of that metal by about a half a turn. And without further ado, I'm just going to try it. Let's see if this works. Oh, I hope this works. Really hoping this works. There's no lube. Didn't say anything about lube. I'm gonna keep threading you in. I can feel the threads engaging. That is nice and promising. A little bit of crap coming out. But, I believe we have some threads. I'm gonna see if that tang will... Okay, it is about half below. And as I said earlier, this is not a structural super important bolt. So I'm not gonna worry about it too much. <clears throat> Lift installation tool, rotate 90 degrees I'm not sure what I'm rotating 90 degrees. Uh, and tap down sharply to break off wire thread insert tang. Use the tang break off tool to perform this function where supplied. This 
they do not say what that is. I'm gonna guess that this is a Tang break-off tool. Visual inspection, it's got the same outer diameter as that thing. So, use the Tang to break off tool to perform the, okay. So, tap down sharply. I don't know what that means, so I'm gonna grab me a hammer. You didn't see that? All right. Moment of truth. I went to Home Depot and I got a bunch of stainless steel metric six by ones. Will it fit? Oh my gosh, that fits beautifully. This is the first time I've done it. I uh, drilled and tapped a hole on my own outside of work. All right, so all that said, I wanted to hem and haw and go through this slowly to show you, to just make a point that there's nothing mysterious about machinery. You can figure it out with a little bit of patience and intuition and experience. Uh, you know, not trying to diminish what mechanics do. It is hard, skilled work. Uh, it just, I don't know, if you're an engineer like me, you went to school and you got all the math in the world under your belt, but just because of the way a lot of colleges work, you haven't done anything with your hands and machinery can seem very mysterious. Well, it's not, it's just like differential equations or linear algebra or statics and dynamics, chemistry, you name it. You put in the effort, you will learn it and don't be afraid to break stuff.